was on was surely one that you don't have a long life doing that. You're either gonna end up dead or in jail. When I first started using alcohol, I think it was the summer that I was turning 11 actually, it hooked me instantly. I was like, I like this feeling. I wanna do it more. I do remember coming home one day and I had that immediate feeling like, like somebody punched me in the stomach as soon as I walked in the door, like something was wrong. And, and I go up the stairs and the bedroom door is locked and my mother is telling me, go away, go away. I was able to get the door open and she was you know, sitting on the bedroom floor and she had attempted to slit her wrist with a, you know, a razor blade. And I'm 12 years old and it's like, I'm not mature enough to deal with a situation like that. When I found drugs, I had found that something. That's something I had always been looking for. That's something that just takes everything that's going on around me and makes it go away. But the problem was, none of that stuff went away. It was always there. I was self-centered and self-seeking, so I was completely about myself, and all the while I'm trying to find me inside me, but I don't even have any direction. I literally resented the fact that I was alive. But that rush of, you know, no feeling in my body coming over me, it was like, oh man, this is, a, you know, this is amazing. I was living life in a way that I never imagined I would be like that. You know, I didn't ever think that I would be that kind of drug addict, that kind of person. I'd be staying in you know, cheap hotels and, and there was multiple occasions when I would overdose on the medication and thank God I didn't die right there on the floor, but I would wake up with, you know, dried vomit on my mouth or, you know, dried foam in my mouth and, you know, head bloody, and knuckles bloody. Would have no idea what I did or how I got there. Those mornings when I'd wake up after that, it wasn't even, I'm lucky to be alive. It was just like, where can I get the next one? And that's pretty much how my days went for years on end. I can't put it into words other than like, he was literally saving my life because he knew that I needed saving. The day that I made the decision that, you know, I, I needed to make a change, I woke up like hands bloodied, nose bloodied, and I went downstairs and, and I know my mother was, was in the living room and she just looked really concerned. I remember going outside that, that same day and I noticed that the sun was shining, right? And I heard the birds chirping and the, the crazy part was is that I had missed an entire year. You know, it was a sign from you know, who I know now to be God telling me like, you know, Life is coming back to you. A few days later, I was on my, you know, on a plane to Florida to go to a rehab facility. You know, I, I was in the facility for quite some time. I, I got clean, but once the drugs were removed, there was still a void. It's a feeling of complete hopelessness, and I felt like there was really no way out. I felt like there was no light because it seemed like the hole was so deep and it was so dark where I was that like taking my own life was a better option. There was some friends of mine that attended LifePoint. I had decided to attend that day. Somebody had encouraged me to show up and I, I felt the spirit. I felt like God was in me that day. I had this overwhelming feeling like my stomach was on fire, that something was happening right at this moment. It was like my hand went up without me even telling my hand to go up. And I said the prayer, but then when we said amen, it was like the feeling of relief that washed over me was like nothing that I'd ever felt. I mean, I truly felt like I had just made the best decision of my life at that very moment. A person who came from 
no religious background, no relationship with God, somebody who by all statistics shouldn't be here. I should be in jail or dead. Those are my two options. But yet I'm here, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I have feel, you know, I can feel. Because when I sit out and I look at something like this, I mean the world is so huge, God created all of this and I'm so small. The fact that God sacrificed his own son for somebody like me is a, is a pretty overwhelming feeling. The man who I am is the man that God is molding me to be. And he's not done with me.